Not a lot of people know about Puerto Rico and America, even though they are American citizens too. The very little information known is typically not learned from the classroom. A group of American students plan to go to San Juan for spring break. This is what they know about Puerto Rico. And it seems like a separate country. Um, I think people would consider it like a, a territory like that a separate country. I know Puerto Rico is a territory, it's not a US state, and as I explained earlier, they have House Representatives of Latin American culture. That's about it. I definitely don't know um, a lot about Puerto Rico. Um, I think it's definitely something um, I definitely want to like take in. I know it's like a Spanish-speaking place, and that was good for, good for me too because I'm a uh, Spanish minor, so maybe I can use some Spanish there. I'd like to, uh, I don't know if you know, we're a colony of the United States. Um, that's important because most people, uh, when we go to the United States, to other states, they think we're international. They don't know what part of the United States is a territory. Puerto Rico is known to be the middle child of America, forgotten and disposed of. Yes, I, 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 a lot of the problems of Puerto Rico now have to do with a poor administration from the local government and and measures that are in some sense, in some ways, undemocratic for the people of Puerto Rico coming from Washington. The government is not helping, they just want to just... Because a statehood has always been sold as progress for the people of Puerto Rico, as hope, as something to dream of for the future, for a better future. But I don't think so. Right? If they have to follow like our laws, um, abide by our rules, then they should have a say in who governs them. Um, and like. That doesn't just go for local government, that goes for like the president, because it's their, it's their president too. You can clearly see that when, for instance, Puerto Rico really got bankrupt because of, of a, a debt problem. And it was, it was the debt they owe to bondholders. The Congress passed PROMESA. PROMESA is a Puerto Rico Oversight and Restructuring Act. The idea was to deal with the bankruptcy of the government of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, because of its unique status, didn't have a, a, a law to work with its bankruptcy. But if we forget for why, how will that affect? Who said the debt is not even legal? Then in 2015, the government of Puerto Rico declared bankruptcy. One night, they, one day, they already had painted the normal flag with the light blue. And the next day, they woke up and their flag was white. And we were like, wow, who did that? It was the same collective artist. And when we, they asked them why you did that, they said, because we are mourning. We are in luto, in the funeral. We lost our power over our own decisions. Just like how Americans are known for their patriotic spirit. They have Puerto Rican flags all over their place. I feel like everywhere, there was a lot of Puerto Rican flags. There was like, there was like street art of like the Puerto Rican flag. It was on like t-shirts. A lot of people just had it. I think I saw some people with like tattoos. The Puerto Rican flag is simply inescapable in Puerto Rico. But that brings a lot of people together. So, um, in most of our designs, we include our flag. This is, this is the representation of, of Puerto Rico. There are so many pieces that embody Puerto Rican pride. To name just a few. Our visual arts. Good food. Um, music, which we don't really listen to here that, that a lot. Sometimes outside, but not really. Well, from the tropics, we're always laughing, happy, party. You know, we're just... Friendly people. Don't want to be like a tourist necessarily. Definitely want to like get the full experience. Warm beach, jungle. That's pretty much all I know about it. Even just like during the day, seeing like if there's like markets on the streets or like anything like that. It's telling me to go to this place called. Uh, L U K, I think, and it's like a rainforest there. It was like really cool. So maybe I'll check that out and also the, the culture of Puerto Ricans, they, they are expressive. Hurricane Maria hit us for 12 hours, just like, a, it's just, you know, hitting us for 12 hours. We just didn't say, is this ever gonna stop? Like before Maria, after Maria. 
So after the Hurricane Maria passed, uh, there was a like a new feeling of what what a Puerto Rican was meant to be, and we got really empowered by our flag, by our national symbols. As we think, uh, many Puerto Ricans think uh, we are a nation of our own. After the Hurricane Maria, uh, I started the project with, with a partner. I I've always liked graphic design. Everything, everything that defines being a Puerto Rican inspires us, inspires us in a way. Um, yeah, because that, that, that's what we try to do. We try to celebrate our, our identity. The, the multicolored housing with street art with Tom. I'm painting when I see it, you form a significant having this painting. I think just like looking around you and being like, wow, I'm just like swimming in a river in a jungle in Puerto Rico. As corny as it sounds, it was just like really cool. Natural beauty is something that it, today is especially, I don't want to say like fleeting and sound all artsy, but like everything's getting like built on. So I feel like you just gotta appreciate nature sometimes. Like all these different animals walking around, like outside our hotel, there was a rooster every morning. I would say like, for instance, a rooster, right? <laughs> Many artists bring the rooster. Uh, and, and the rooster is it, it, a symbol of, of bravery, of, of, you know, um, fearlessness. So. It was really nice. I always like think about like um, the process of like the artist doing it and like how it's like not on like a flat surface. So it's like even more impressive when I see it. In La Placita, there was a lot of street art wherever they could fit. Like there were on like some random door. There was one a picture of Seth in front of it. It says avoid hangover, stay drunk, going like that. Um, there's a bunch of like flowers and leaves and stuff around. All the buildings were just like so colorful. I didn't even think it like needed an excess of art. He uses he looked for in, important people of our history and he created a mural with their faces. Before their trip, the Americans were excited to try Puerto Rican food, expecting really heavy Hispanic food, so um, tacos, beans, I don't want to sound <laughs> stereotypical, but I think uh, that's what I would expect there. I uh, hope you have some good food there. When I was seven years old, because I saw some uh, chef in the TV, uh, I said I want to be a chef, and the rest is history. All my life I'm cooking and working in the industry. I feel like one of the things I noticed a lot um, when we got to eat, like the service was definitely, it wasn't, I don't want to say it was slower, but it was more like at a relaxed, calm pace. They really wanted you to like uh, enjoy your time um, with the people that you're eating dinner with. Um, yeah, but not a place, little hole in the wall, and but not a place. Oh, they got a lot of my money. And that was the best empanadas. Ever. For me, Puerto Rican cooking, cooking is, is the best food in the world. I think it's just like a different like appreciation. Like I think they probably see it more so as like an experience instead of like an outing. I would say like Puerto Rican food is a combination of of different culture. For that reason, the, the, the Puerto Rican food is very rich, very flavorful because we we can mix all culture with our flavors. When you say art in Puerto Rico, one of the first things that comes to people is music. Bad Bunny is a legend there. I, I didn't know this before going there, but he is from there. We have a great uh, figures that are definitely representing our culture in, in, in music, for example, you can say Bad Bunny, that's our like a national <laughs> ambassador. Like, Puerto Rico has my heart or something like that in, in that song. Well, music is what really brings Puerto Rican pride to its stop <laughs> in many ways. And then Paul Mopi, storytelling, rescuing our roots from Africa and expressing through movement. Uh, it's a beat of the drum. And then the dancer can actually start a conversation with the drummer. Without this music, we don't have sauce. Feel present. In our, in our, in our crowd, and, and people willing and feeling like 
I have to learn salsa. I think dance has historically been the stress reliever for a lot of people in Puerto Rico. We only got like, we only got to scratch the surface. Go to Guayama and you visit these people and they, and they, you know, they have so little but they would give you so much. We try to help everybody to come to Puerto Rico. Even right after Hurricane Maria, another hurricane hit the Caribbeans nearby. And I go, look at us, we don't have water, we don't have electricity. Here we are getting, not a lot, but getting whoever could give what they had still left to help this other country who has been going through what we were going through. But our communities grew together unbelievably, unbelievably together close. Why I say this? Because actually, we couldn't get hold of our families on the rest of the island. People who probably didn't, never spoke to each other spoke to them. Call and unite each other. And I think that is our pride. I love being with them again. So, like, like we say, there's a song that says, Boricua, hasta aunque nacieran la luna, it's this translation is you can be a Puerto Rican even though you were born on the moon it doesn't matter where you were born uh, it's really if you respect our, our culture if you believe that we are a nation if you believe that our people have uh, an identity a, uh, our own way of life that's how strong the, the pride for us is here here we, we say that you don't know what how much you love something until you miss it and I was sitting in the water, listening to music. There was a Puerto Rican flag um, to my to my right. I think I really couldn't beat that view of the waves crashing into the coast. And it was like exactly what I was picturing. Because I love my culture. I love my culture. I love my food. I love uh, the people. Many things to do it and do it for love. And for most of my life, San Juan has been home for me. Uh, I'm very proud to be in Puerto Rico. The, the Puerto Rican pride, it, it's, it's alive. You feel it. You, you, you kind of see it in the face of the people. It was something straight out of a dream. Like we were, the wind was like blowing in my face, and I was on a scooter, and I was alive. Once you are growing up here, once you get the Puerto Rican culture, stay with you for the rest of your life. And I was celebrating my life like the rest of the trip. I'd say definitely a lot of Puerto Rican pride. I think the guy definitely was. I feel sure Tori is very proud of Puerto Rican. That's in their skin that we all, oh, that's your plant stain stain, right? But it's, it's just a symbolic thing, but it's, um, you know, brings people of Puerto Rico together. Definitely felt like that more to unity, culture. My hope is that we can get united, that we can deal with issues, big issues like inequality, like crime like misogyny and, and many other of the social issues, we can have a, a, a conversation to fix them effectively. Come with, you know, we can bring solutions, but from different parts, from the, all, all the, the communities, the government, the private sector, and, and the agencies of the government as well, that they can bring together solutions, real solutions, not just you know, political ideology or, or political campaigns for the next election. Um, I wish, yes, there's more consensus and for, for the good of everybody, really, for making Puerto Rico a better place for everybody, right? Um, so yeah, that's my hope. And that's what I, I wake up every morning <laughs> for doing.